a very good breakfast. According to a lot of the, the traditions, uh, genealogy, they can trace all the way back to many, many generations. Unfortunately, in the Yang family, he can only recall up to two generations above him. And only is after he, he could recognize or he could remember uh, that he realized that he, had, he could trace back only like two generations. Uh, my grandfather, yeah. my grandfather. And he was born in uh, Jiangsu province. And Jiangsu province is a pretty prosperous province. Thank you. I think probably somebody can do better than I do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Jiangsu province, the whole area is so big. Even though the Jiangsu province is big, but um, um, the population, the, the, the poor and the rich, they're very uneven. And our family came from the north side of uh, Jiangsu province. And Huayan, that region is more from more on the poor side of the region. And this knowledge actually is not from my relatives or like my father's or, or mom's side. Maybe it's from reading from um, the, the, the news. Uh, 
From my dad's side, for quite a few generations, they're all uh, their uh, occupation is uh, medicine. They were doctors, yeah. but mainly Chinese medicine. Uh, okay, it didn't mean that. Yeah,根据这个呃国内的一些对中国中国医学历史来讲，比较辛苦的是什么呢？我们家乡的传统，我我们这家族传统就是这样，就杨家的男孩子，这这是这是封建的思想啊，男孩子必须得懂得understand，
as wide as this room, but not as deep. Okay, maybe a little bit, um, yeah, not, not so deep. So he took a room, uh, uh, sleep out of the room, so he can't shoot the room, see that curtain. So in that room, he recalled that just around the four walls, there were all books, all covered with books. And that was where he studied, he met with uh, visitors, and he uh, saw his relatives. Okay. Even his uh, his own offspring, he did not see them every day. Okay. And I felt very fortunate. Uh, even his um, uh, sons and daughters, that generation, did not see him very often. But the grandkids saw him every day. Well, especially uh, Da Jiu and uh, his. Sister, elder sister, uh, branch one. Uh, so in the last uh, maybe two decades, I've been seeing a very well-known herbalist Chinese doctor, uh, both in Taiwan and he's practiced here. Uh, he lives in Newport Beach, and he told me that my your my grandfather very specializing in typhoid. He knew about my grandfather. Is very well known. So, in, even in the books, they're written, my grandfather's, what he did, and what his specialization, what his invention. So, our grandfather is not just a regular doctor, he's very well known, even to this day. Yeah, Stanford, I mean, Typhoid, that's what he told me. He showed me that book, that's where my grandfather, yeah. Okay, that's I don't think I need to translate into Chinese, right? No. Okay. Well, no. <laughs> 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 uh, just that what we should do. Uh, what's what you do? Can you watch on that? You hold your show for some new fun. You want to get it with the other people. You know, yeah, 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 when he started to practice, I, I do not know, but uh, at that time he was actually a doctor for the royals, right? Am I translating that correctly? So, 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 or, or, royals. Yeah. Royalties. 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 Yeah, 
这是什么呢？感觉什么呢？这来看病的医生呢，大部分都是经济有地位或者是有关节这些人，钱有。During that time of when he was the head of the hospital, he felt that、uh, most of the people who came in,、uh, pa patients that who came in, are very well off、um, and uh, well known、um, patients. 结果他好像不知道还是他本人的良心发现的，还是一开始你就感觉没有办法。后来他想到，我不能在这儿医院做。He felt like his calling was not really treating the high officials, the, the well-off folks. And that was when he decided to start his own、um, hospital. And that was the first Uh, Chinese hospital ever been built or operated uh, in uh, in the Beijing history in China in China even. So you guys should be proud. <laughs> really, you really should be proud. Should be the the first private or the first first private private Chinese Chinese medicine hospital. Yeah, or Chinese Just, medicine. yeah.、Okay. First Chinese medicine hospital. Uh, ever in China, and of course in Beijing, okay, that was started by our your great grandfather. Okay, he, so, so, yeah, is a bit small compared to the current hospital. But, the medical, 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 Even though the hospital itself was not very big, but it did have many, many units like the、um, the, 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 the the pharmacies, the internal medicine, the operations. 有没有开刀的？有没有 surgery? Surgery? Okay. Or in acupuncture, just multiple、uh, kind of different specialties. 你你，爷爷在大在北京，他有一个传统。吴兴忠的总是在不同的时期有不同的四大名医，就中医的名医，因为他不是一致的，从头到尾都是这四个，有的过世了呢，哎，他又有新的思维出现。And in Beijing at that time,、uh, our great grandfather was one of the four most famous doctors. And then, if you look up into the internet, sometimes how many, you know, which or which were the four, sometimes will be different. It really depending on which era of、uh, the time that you're looking into, and definitely your grandfather was one of the four most famous doctors. Okay, but if you look up internet right now, you may not see his name because I, well, I probably、uh, go ahead of that. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. He, his business, ah, basically two parts. One part is the medicine, 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 the medicine. 你说晚饭是反正天黑了才，大部分都天黑，汽车开出去，完了走两家三家，这是给一般来讲的话，都是说在这社会上或者在政府上比较有名的东西。Okay, during that、uh, period of time,、uh, in the evenings he will be riding in 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 the vehicle and actually visit two three patients. Those were The more well-known, wealthy folks at that time. He, uh, 据我知道，可是，在社会上那些记载的这样，可能超过这些啊。他，在我的印象里，他最关注的、最有名的是什么？是医治各种伤寒。Okay. And from his recollection, uh, the most famous specialty that he was famous for was 伤寒是什么？ Typhoid. Typhoid. Okay, it was typhoid. Okay. At that time, the Western medicine did not have the antibiotics for for treating typhoid. 在我记忆里知道的话，在呃北京的比较很有名的医院呢，呃。协和是是第一个可以说
公立的那会北大医院有没有还不知道，什么人有不知道。北北大算规模比较大的，还有一个是德国医院，再还有一个法国医院。这法国医院是我从记录记载上看到，我以前没有听说过。我听说最多的是德国医院。多什么德德国德德国？我知道他们睡，他们干嘛？最多德国医院干嘛？等等等，这是医院。呃，这就是医院，这规模很大，相当大。Okay. 原来在交通医院。Okay, at that time,、uh, from my recollection, I can only recall like two, three hospitals that were very famous and big. One was German, German-owned hospital. One was、uh, um, French、uh, hospital, and there was another、uh, Beijing hospital, right? Beijing, 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 Beijing. 北京医院，就是北京大学的医学院。Okay, and one was uh, uh, affiliated with、uh, Beijing University. So these were kind of the three big size, good size hospitals in Beijing at that time. 对，那个爷爷他这个行医的话，跟一般中医好像不太一样。The way my、uh, grandfather、um, practices medicine was quite different from the tradition. 呃，他跟德国医院的关系。He has a very close association with the German hospital. The German hospital at that time was pretty good in diagnosing typhoid at that time. And, but even though they knew how to diagnose this was typhoid, but they had no、um, treatment. Thank you. Okay. When they ran into this kind of situation, they will contact our grandfather. That, I heard my, we call it Little Sister Gu. Okay. Little Sister Gu, how she is, she is too much. 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 一个是谁？他的一个亲戚是当时是是清朝的官家还是民国初期的官家？是,是生生小孩就是得一种绝症，生小孩就会。One of our relatives at that time knew of a relative when the baby was born. Uh, he had a very rare kind of disease. 结果的话，他就请了几个几个有名的中医会诊。And they were seeking uh, several uh, famous Chinese doctors to diagnose what the problem was. Yeah. 结果就是有有几个医生就就写写这个药单，那个药单上有一种是很凉很凉的药。结果其他的医生啊。我们来，我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。我们来。
that our grandfather, his grandfather uh, wrote. And he said, I will guarantee with my life this will work. See, this is really against the several other doctors, um, their opinions and their advice. Shouldn't be fly on. And he even <laughs> signed his name. Yeah. Should not get one. And guess what? After the baby took this medicine. No, no, not the baby took this. Oh, chat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the baby. We thought it was a baby. It's not right. Okay. So it was not a baby. It was the, uh, the, the, new, uh, the new mother. Okay. So after this new mother uh, took the medicine that was prescribed by uh, his grandfather, she was healed. Hey, uh, from my recollection, there was one thing that he did wrong. And uh, he felt it was really regretful that uh, his grandfather and the generation, generations above him, they were all doctors, they passed on one generation to another, but that knowledge stopped abruptly at his grandfather's level, that generation. Did not pass, did not get passed on to you guys. Yeah. The reason for his decision he felt like the responsibilities of our doctor is tremendously important. And not only the responsibility is big, huge, and it's a very hard profession. And if you diagnose wrong, then some of your patients will die. If you have to be a doctor like this kind, and that people's lives are controlled by you, he would rather say not even be a doctor. I think another thing is his thinking behind it was because he really he loved his offspring and he did not want any of his offsprings to go through the hardship and the pain and this kind of decisions that he has gone through. Yeah. And uh, the doctors at that time really had a really good um, comments about uh, my grandfather. Uh, and he felt that uh, with this decision, he felt that was really a tragic decision. He felt like because of he was so wrapped up and so time consuming in running and operating this hospital, and he had hardly any time to spend with any of his offsprings. So, um, Da Jiu and my mom, they were the only two actually uh, at, for that generation actually went to school, uh, elementary school and uh, middle school, and not the others. So that uh, his father and, and above, they actually were uh, illiterate. 
Is oh, that? I have to correct that because <laughs> when you're rich, you don't send them to public schools, but you invite the private teachers to come to educate them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if probably from his point of view, they probably taught the kids the moral values of at, at that time, but uh, not really the specific skills to survive in a society. <laughs> 我爷爷在世的时候，我刚才听说，我刚才介绍过有有一位我们亲戚，实际是没有血缘的亲戚了，他讲，他对我们家的情况比我们知道的可能还要多。There there was a a distant relative. Actually, that person probably knows about our family and the family history more than even I do. 这话呢，是我爷爷过世之后的事情啊。那个，呃，听他的母亲说，实际这个人的母亲讲，他说你们家怎么那么怪？意思就是说什么？说你爷爷过百把他的精力百分之百的都放在医院跟跟跟疾病了。And after my grandfather passed away, there was distance relative. His her mom actually commenting about it's a very strange uh situation that in our family where uh. His grandfather put a hundred percent of his energy and attention on the hospital. And the two kinds of uh, patients that he actually attended to, one set was the, the rich, wealthy, and the other set is just the civilians. And my grandfather for uh, treating the civilians when they did not have money, and he would just treat them free of charge. And in, a, in his daily um, seeing patients, he always allowed different slots, several slots for treating those really, really poor who do not have money to pay. So the source of the income for the hospital was actually mainly the few visits to the wealthies in the evenings. So at that time, uh, the money you earn, uh, you don't put, you did not put in a bank, to say. And you put together was the, the true uh, gold coins of the sort. So, so how they they, they uh, put away the money was you see uh, uh, shelves of uh, gold coins. They actually collect the money that way and they just put it there. After my grandfather passed away, and all those gold coins disappeared. So who actually is supposed to be responsible, uh, you know, managing or uh, watching over those gold coins? Nobody know. Who took them? Nobody knew. When my grandfather passed away, he was only 59. And he didn't pass away of old age. But was due to an illness. Because what he did was um, that there's some criticism from the, the government officials. Uh, 
，事变前后发生这么这么多事情，是第二次事变，第二次事变。不是这个，啊？这些的说，因为说的那个，就是整个西方和平时代，在过去的话，也就是说，就是在加菲律宾的时代，也就是说，就是在加菲律宾的时代，也就是说，就是在加菲律宾的时代，也就是说，就是在加
Okay. Because he passed away so suddenly, so how you know he definitely did not leave leave a will or, or anything, or how his husband should be managed and so on and so forth, nothing of that sort, uh, because of his sudden uh, passing on. So very, so very unfortunately, uh, before and after his passing, before his passing, the family was kind of wealthy and everything. After he passed away suddenly, and the family just crumbled, not only financially and everything. And very sad because my grandfather passed away, and you recall, uh, I mentioned about my dad and my uncle, and um, the, they're the, the second generation wealthy um, offspring, so they did not have a, a good education. So, so after my grandfather passed away, uh, my father and my uncle, there was they did not have the skills to even to support them. Same year. Okay. And the year that my grandfather passed away was the year that uh, branch number six, uh, our uh, Xiao Yi, was born. The same year. And branch number five, uh, Xiao Xiu, was only three years old. Four. Uh, four, sorry, four, four years old. Three. Three, four, roughly. Anyway. I was only like eight or nine years old. And my, my elder sister was only like ten. So how how do we support a family? I um, mean, his his dad and his mom, and the only way was his mom and dad uh, with um, their mom. Oh yeah, mom and dad. They went to Shanghai to try to start a business. So they barely got by. Okay, so if they earn a little bit of money, they could send the money, very little money back home to Beijing to to support the kids. Okay. For my recollection, the only time they came back to Beijing was during two Chinese Chinese New Year time. Okay, at that time, who is managing, looking after the family was my grandfather's brother. Nagata 没有结婚的有我四姑 yeah. Uh, she was asking how many, uh, actually, how many people in the family at that time when grandfather passed away, and uh, roughly close to 20. 
And none of the family members uh, had a decent profession. 那个塔的家庭很困难我记得当时我的那个五爷爷还有一个是等于是老家的一个亲戚的专家那会儿也投奔我们家在我们家基督两个人就吵架伯母反正要命他就在院子里跪在当地在官地就磕响头我妈不是
three went to the uh, orphanage, so that was half the six. Oh. But for a while, though, just for a few months, okay? Only for a few months, so they did not stay in the orphanage forever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had a lot of respect for my grandfather. I felt like um, even though he was very famous, uh, famous uh, at his time and a well-known doctor, but I felt like he had no experience uh, raising a family or managing his household activities. 那个这个时间上不太多啊就关于我妈妈的事情呢就另外的话我集中我所想讲的是什么呢第一个就是说我们分散了多久很久就在美国地的时候是我们分别三十三十三年到三十四年之后 uh, due to time constraint, uh, what happened to my mother, and actually, um, Da Jiu wrote a very detailed um, article that's in the photo album. Okay, now it's in Chinese. Okay, and um, and only after the family got separated 33 or 34 years, we got reunited in the States. Yeah. <coughs> 我对我爷的印象看来的话，他的本身的道德品质是我们每一个人的榜样。From from my point of view, my grandfather's values and his moral values and everything is a is an example for every one of us.这主要表现在他对他的事业这个态度上，也反映出来他的道德水平。And it it shows it really reflect from how. He, he ran his uh, business, the hospital, how he treats his, pa uh, his patients, really reflect his moral standards. Based on the income that he he has accumulated, okay, by treating patients, some very well off patients, uh, he should have some houses uh, or savings for his off offsprings, but none of that actually happened. It really showed that his empathy toward uh, poor people who are sick, and like he said earlier, that many times that he treated poor patients without charge. And he even put aside slots of those time every day, just mainly for those poor pa uh, uh, patients that could not pay for uh, his treatment. So I felt like even though at my grandfather's level, he decided not to pass on any of his knowledge to his offspring. So from from the history. A family history it looks like the medicine, practicing medicine, was stopped for two generations. And but after uh, you all came to the states, it seems like that was resurrected. Okay, that uh, the medicine as a profession is pretty common 
in the crowd sitting here. I have a request. Okay. I, I, I have a request. Those who are sitting here, if you're already uh, a practice uh, doctor, a physician medicine. or anything, medicine, practicing medicine, would you please stand up? Or in the process. Or in the process. Would you stand up? Stand up. Don't be shy. So I have a wish. Uh, I wish that there will be more of you to become a doctor. Not only just become a doctor, but become a doctor of with the kind of moral standard that my grandfather has, treating poor patients, the people who are who are needing the treatments, and and, and they're poor. My assessment about my grandfather, the first thing. He was a very honest a person, a doctor with empathy, and was very open and honest. When my grandpa, grandmother passed away, my grandfather, grandmother passed away a year before I was born, so I never had an opportunity to see her. At that time, actually, I, I need to share with you a little bit about back, back then. Uh, after my grandmother passed away, he, um, not only he himself decided, and of course the, the advice from the, the, the kids, that not to get remarried again. And he stayed single as a widower the rest of his life. And that was very rare in the Chinese society back then. Okay, very rare. You never heard of even probably. Very rare, uh, not existent probably, that when um, a person's wife passed away, that person, that widower, did not get remarried. Practically just everybody. Yeah, 
Three down for a minute. In, in those kind of old days, um, <clears throat> if the widow got remarried, um, the second wife, the, the stepmom, the, her relationship with the stepkids usually is pretty bad in general. Yeah, so And like he said before, okay, um, he was a prime example of you guys sitting here as doctor that the way he is his um values. Uh, the way he actually um, raised his kids was based on his own example. Honest and um, loyal. Okay. Truthful, loyal, and honest. And you really have great empathy, compassion. compassion. I'll stop here. Well, thanks, Carl Jill, for giving us such a great uh, history about the Yang's family. I'm sure some of you have some questions for him or for other first generation members. But can we keep that to after uh, Xiao Yi's? Uh... Well, you know what? Uh, I was told that each one of us, the number one generation, share about us. So that's my understanding. No, because it's my own. That's my own story. It's okay. So. We we'll just be spontaneous. Then. <laughs> uh, so would you like to go with your story, or should we have? I think I think question and answer first, and then okay. if any one of us would like to would share. Like to add? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. So maybe so six of you yeah. sit here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, can we? There was great details about the great grandfather, obviously, but can we have a little bit more history about the six siblings? Because, you know. They gone through some really turbulent times, and you know, with, with some, you know, bits and pieces. So, yeah. uh, I don't know if you individually want to talk about it or collectively, but yeah, that's what I prepared. I'm so glad that the gang's family can all get together. Yeah, and really have demonstrated uh, the united kind of uh, spirit. With, with six siblings, even when we were young, we, we got separated. Even though we're separated in different uh, faraway places, but our hearts were together. Even though after 33, 34 years of separation, we got reunited. And I, I really hope that this tradition of unitedness be together will will be passed on from generation to another generation, not just only stay at their generation. And for this gathering there are two people that we really have a lot of respect to. One is our mother, their mother. She she was a, a lady. <laughs> she was a lady. <laughs> she was a woman, sorry. She was a woman, sorry. 
价值证明这个组织来，一个是员工，就是自己一个人的这个生存已经很很困难。During the war times, even to survive to survive by yourself as a woman was extremely difficult. 那他就说他不止他一个人，他有六个孩子，他还要顾照顾着。So not only she had to figure out how to survive and、um, keep herself alive, she had six kids, young kids that she had to make sure that they survive too. Seven years old, my father passed away. When I was seven years old, my father passed away. So from that time on, it was my mother who took care of all the household chores. And after my father passed away, my mom was the only person that supported the family and be the The, the key foundation for the family. And, and she really had limited、um, capabilities or opportunities. And, and another、uh, second most important person is my、uh, oldest sister. Because she wants to、uh, share part of、uh, the the responsibility of raising the the big family. She put her own academic work aside. And she sacrificed opportunities that she could pursue a、uh, a higher education. When she was a student, she was the best student always in the class. But she was a family. <laughs> and because of the family, and、uh, she sacrificed that. So these these two people in our modern day, if we don't have these two people, then today this kind of activity is completely impossible. If it were not for my mother and my older sister, this kind of reunion would be not even existent, not even possible. So we hope that each person can continue this kind of activity. I sure hope that each one of us will continue with this unselfish、uh, spirit and pass on this to our offsprings. This is what I would like to add. Uh, 加一点点。我也是杨家人。OK。I want to add on to what 小舅 said。对。正清讲到大姐妈妈，我要补充一点呢。And 小舅 mentioned only uh their mother and their older sister, but I would like to add on a little more about him. About uh. 小舅，哎，对，小舅，我们要感恩，所有的人要感恩。这么说 ，We need to be grateful。第一，大姐和一大哥。First is、uh, the elder sister， 呃，大姐 ，and the other husband。他们从大陆飞到台湾。They flew from、uh, mainland China to Taiwan. 改变了我们所有的 And because because of that act, it changed every one of you's life and your 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 your、um, course of life on this earth. 第二个，郑清 And the second is、uh, 小舅。他一九六零年一个人坐船来到美国 In 1960, he was.、Uh, He was by himself to、um, boat, a freight, freight, freight boat, and he came by himself to the states in 1960. 和瑞姨在这里奋斗 And、uh, he and、uh, his wife,、uh, Judy, 在在哪里？休息了下。Okay. They they really they were the ones that the two of them struggled here. 他们第一个来。以后我们一家一家，这么多人都来了。And because of them, the rest of the families came one family at a time, and we all came here. 第三要感谢妈妈，妈妈六十多岁
Okay. And I, another person I want to thank is their mother. She was in her 60s. She did not know a word of English, but Okay. At that time, because in order to get all of you uh, to the states, she had to be a United States citizen. So not knowing a word of English, she decided to study English in her 60s. After she has the exam and become an American citizen, she wrote a letter to them saying, This one big burden in my heart just dropped. And I want to thank their mother and Xiao uh, Jiu and Wu uh, Mama for their Oh, and uh, my father, um, her, her husband. For, for allowing all of you to have opportunities to come to the States and to become where you are right now. Okay, thank you. I want to add on a little bit more. I felt like my, well, essentially it's my dad, okay. Uh, my mom's husband, my dad, was a very uh, outrageous person. Okay. Before they, they uh, moved to Taiwan, there was a story. Probably a lot of you did not know. Now I will share with you. That was roughly about uh, uh, 1948 during that time. Okay. At that time, none of you exist. Except, except me. I was a baby. Now you know my age, right? <laughs> So shortly after my mom got married, and she along with uh, the siblings all lived together in Beijing. And during that time, support the families, the extended families, along educating them. Uh, my father really set up a, a, a excellent example. Uh, the war between the Communist Party and the Nationalist Party was a big uh, tragedy happened in China. There was nothing the civilians like us could do. Uh, during that time, roughly around 1948, that kind of era at that time, from his recollection, actually the Communist Party already surrounded the Beijing city. All the gates to the Beijing city, they were all closed. My dad was a, uh, a pilot working for uh, the Nationalist Party. So at that time, they were they received order to retreat to Shanghai. So he was ready to take his family, my my father's family, my mom and myself, baby, uh, and some of his relatives to Shanghai. That was the plan. Yeah. 
all of Nima. And, and he remembered at that time, uh, they lived with uh, their aunt. Okay. okay. My mother was a widow. Her sister is a widow. Her sister had two kids. Even though my mom was a widow, she asked her sister and the two kids to come and live with us. And my mom would not only support all of us, she also supported her sister and her kids. So they came to live with us. Before the Communist Party surrounded the Beijing city, uh, the Nationalist um, Party and the Air Force already retreated to Shanghai. At that time, my mother was in Shanghai. At that time, my mom uh, discussed with my father and request. Okay. And the request from their mother uh, to my father was uh, not only my mom and, and their direct family were going to be moved to Shanghai, retreat to Shanghai, and their mom's request was all of the siblings, uh, uh, she asked my father to take them all to Shanghai from Beijing. Actually, this is a very hard to be accomplished request. Okay, at that time, uh, the two sisters, uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> These two were not in Beijing. They were in Tianjin, actually going to school. Uh, okay. So because of the two were in Tianjin going to school, the remaining uh, three were in Beijing along with the relatives. And then, remember at that time, the Communist Party already surrounded Beijing City. Uh, at that time, when the Communist Party already surrounded Beijing City, there were no airport that uh, airplanes could uh, uh, come down or, or uh, take off. And there was only like a, 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 a sports field in the school that very small, of course, you know, and uh, around it was like either one side was tall building and the other side was on the wall, the city wall. Okay. Even though at that time uh, the Nationalist Party, the Air Force was already retreated to Shanghai, but there were still few remaining trying to gather the remaining stuff from Beijing City. So there were still a few um, um, Air Force folks still remain in Beijing. And uh, my father made a request to his uh, upper um, officials. officials to 
because of their mother's request. So he made a request to uh, his higher officials to allow him to take my mom's siblings to out of Beijing. Due to the, the time constraint, it's really urgent at time. Uh, at that time, Xiaojiu uh, was not at home. So there was only two out of three that were available. And the order was, you have to leave right away and leave right now. Okay. So uh so so the only two that actually left Beijing at that time was Xiao Yi and, and Da Zhou. They left um in the in the flight to Shanghai. So when their mom saw that uh, her youngest son was not uh, one of the, the three, because only two out of the three moved, uh, went to Shanghai. She, she saw. She broke down. And the last mi the last mission that my, my father had, actually Xiao Jiu. If you try to figure out the fact. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So actually the last flight the last flight out of Beijing from a nationals party was flown by my dad with Xiao Jiu on the airplane. <laughs> okay. As soon as the second the airplane just got lifted off, guess what? The Communist Party already invaded the Beijing city. I can add something. Okay. <laughs> at that time, the reason why we use a field at school is because the airport is already taken by the Communist Party. They part of them already come in the city. So in another part of the city, that's where my brother-in-law would land. There's no runways. Okay. The reason they didn't shoot us down is because that was a Chinese New Year. Oh. Wow. Okay. So. My, uh, my brother and I was the last two days before the end of Chinese New Year. My brother was the end of Chinese, uh, the, just my year, December, whatever, the last day. The next day was New Year. That's why they were celebrating. They didn't bother to shoot us down. Uh, yeah. That's why. That yeah. was the key. The timing yeah. was just perfect. Yes. Jingle 所以我妈妈就决定留下来，让我也留下来陪着他们，就暂时不去台湾，以后等他们联系上再说。At that, that time, they were planning to actually retreat to Taiwan, and out of the six, because the two were still in school in another city, so uh, their mother uh, decided against flying to Taiwan with my dad and my mom. So then she decided that she will keep the oldest son. With her and stay in Shanghai. Waiting so, for the two. waiting for the two who are missing, who are still in school in another province, in another town. Okay. So, end up, Xiao Jiu, the two end, Xiao Jiu and Xiao Yi, they were the only two that went with my mom and my dad and retreat to Taiwan.
That was when the whole family just got separated. Okay, two were in, three were in Taiwan, and uh, their mom in Dajiu in Shanghai, and the two sisters were in hold on in Tianjin. Okay, how old, how old were each of them at that time? Okay, how old were you? Could you say? Oh, uh, I went to Taiwan when I was seven. Seven. Yeah. Um, twelve. I'm thirteen. Okay. Thirteen, twelve, and Xiaojiu was yeah. ten. And of course, my mom was, you know, the oldest. You know, so, I mean, how old was she? How old was she? Sixteen. So my mom was like only eighteen or nineteen. Okay, 大姐，讲一下张琪的事儿吧。<笑>你是你们先生跟你把这些这些那么紧急的时候带出来。我讲一句话，我我就是我们那年去大连祭你父亲的时候，我对他，我只有一句话。Yeah, some of you probably know my father passed away on a mission when uh in 1961. So uh, in nine, in 2011, 50 years af after his plane was shut down, a mission in Dalian, uh, China, we all went there. And my ma mother, there was only one thought in her mind. And out of the gratefulness she felt toward my dad. One thing that's that really... <laughs> 哎，先让蒋妈和我理解是什么。OK， 理解是什么？就是就这就是这一句话。The one thing she felt eternally grateful was how, because of my dad, during the almost impossible situation, he got, I mean, risking his own life, that he got some of them out of China and to Taiwan. And to Shanghai, of course. So she, my mom was eternally grateful to my dad because of that. Because if that did not happen that way, guess what? A lot of you guys probably would not be sitting here. You probably will be in China. Or not even here. Or not, or not even here. Because some of you were born and married here, right? So you will not have a chance to meet your spouses here. I would like to. <laughs> I don't need to translate. <laughs> you know, my 大姐 was just still in her teens. Can imagine, 17, 18 year old, took all of us in Taiwan. Now, how many of you are teenagers? Let me raise. Put it in your hands. Let me see. Still teens. All right. How old are you, Casey? 18. Yeah. You see, she's already have all the responsibility, not just me and my brother, and also my her dad's father, mother, and other nephew. So by the time we have ten people living there, and she's being a teenager, taking care of all of us. I just thought of myself, said, "Wow, I don't you know even know how to survive. I mean, I don't even know how to be a mom myself." Is it saying? Yeah, so they really sacrifice. One word I can see is is a sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. I was thinking, why would my mom, okay, no degree, a woman in China at that time, how do you survive? I saw one movie one time ago in the U.S. Talk about a kid. Was dropped off at a art institute. They call art institute. Actually, it's not art institute. Where the parents just took the kids and dumped them there. At that time, I thought, well, I, my mom could have dropped me there. All of us, right? Six kids, but she didn't. All her life was sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. My sister, her life was sacrifice, sacrifice. sacrifice. My brother Ching, he came here first, and I came here second. He and Judy, I will have to say Judy. Okay, Judy was not a Yang at that time, right? I mean, she married to him. But when all my siblings from China came to here, guess what? 
they were the ones sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. I think this is really a biggest virtue. I think the Yang's legacy is to love. 同宽厚，善良，友爱，嗯、um, ，宽容，然后下一代更伟大。Do you want, you want to translate? Yeah. So for for the uh, for the uh, Chinese tradition, uh, oh, for for the fam family uh, legacy, uh, you know she hopes you know our I think what we're known for is to be with Shan Liang. Shan Liang is kind, kindness, um, you know, friendship and love, and Kuan Ho is to be big, generous, big-hearted. Um, and Kuan Rong for, 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 for the forgiveness, right? And wish the the next generation to be even greater. The life you will not imagine. Every day they will march and march and march during the nighttime. During the daytime they will sleep. And she said, she said that her heels were just like so raw that you cannot tell where the shoes or the socks or your or your 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 flesh. And they said sometimes they're so sleepy they're just like walking just like a zombie. And one time, this is really a problem to Saka, that when she and her friend, you know, you 跟另外一个朋友是不是？不是。She came out of the building they were in, and then when she went back, the bomb came and killed, and she was spared. With how many people you 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 know you do it? Two hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. One hundred. One hundred. There are how many people left behind? Ah, we 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 are from the Hmong people, so we don't count. Six. Only four people left behind. Hundreds of people went there. Only four came back alive. This go on for how many years? Three years. Um, three years. Three years. Sometimes they they slept and they slept and they found out woke up. They slept on corpse. We cannot imagine how my two sisters have gone through. And I couldn't imagine. I mean, just the thing that they, they they didn't go crazy, and they came back alive. And he, they have all of you guys. That's a miracle. And I really appreciate my two sisters because, you see, they suffered a lot because three of us in the free country, right? My second, third sister, she was interrogated day and night. That's why she had a nervous breakdown. Her uh, vocal cord was paralyzed because of us in the free country. But they never complain. They never say, "Oh, because of you guys in the U.S. and we suffered." Never a bad word. Never complain. So I think that just the big heartedness. You know, talk about a big heartedness and forgiving. Uh, so I just want to say this about them because they don't want to say it about themselves. And my third sister, uh, by the way, when we're in the orphanage, I don't remember I suffered. Okay, actually, my childhood when I remember, I was happy because I was the youngest, and they all felt sorry for me because remember <laughs> when I was born, the the whole family went downhill. They all feel sorry for me. So many times they would just take me. Oh, that poor little. Oh, my nickname is Habir Bialian, 大嘴小妖怪 Translate to you: flat nose, flat face, big mouth, little elf. <laughs> oh, weirdo. Okay. Uh, so some of them are just some of them take me out to see movies. Some of them just take me out to have a little. You know,、uh, what do you call it? Snacks, snacks, snacks. Oh, good, good stuff. Okay. And they always make fun of me. All right. They try to scare me with a boogie, boogie man. <laughs> I still remember. 
They said, oh, boogeyman is down there, boogeyman is down there. And they scared me to death. <laughs> I mean, for the longest time, I was scared of boogeyman. <laughs> yeah, so um, even though we had seems very poor, very uh, tragic environment, but my older siblings never make me feel that I'm all alone. They always love me and they make me happy. So when I think about my childhood, I thought about good times. <laughs> yeah. And actually the only one thing about the, the orphanage was that uh, they always scared me about the, the uh, coyotes, right? Long Lila, Long Lila. So in the orphanage, there coyotes every night hollering. So we were, uh, I was in a big, huge room, and my bed is at the door, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so can you imagine? And I, I remember my uh, uh, our girl told me, Long Lila, when the uh, um, coyote comes, the only thing you can work them off is use that uh, incense, burn incense. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you go like this. <laughs> My fear was always, when I'm sleeping, I will be the first one in the coyote house, not the first one. <laughs> but otherwise, it's very short, it's only a few months. My mom really didn't know that we're in the orphanage, but she found out she was really angry. So she immediately got us out. So don't feel sorry for us. Be happy for us, because I think it's really by God's grace we're all here. Isn't it a miracle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I remember during a time when uh, his their grandpa passed away and Xiaoyi was born. And um and Why can I say this? Okay. This is my, <laughs> my mom was telling me, okay, this is what God telling me. She said when you were little, you were so sick, we did not we didn't think you were gonna survive. But it's another relative's kid, just fat and chubby and healthy. We thought, you're going to die, that kid is going to live. But end up, I survived. And she told me my grandfather was very sick. She gave her milk to my grandfather, hopefully that he's going to survive. But still, by God's grace, I survived. Now, my brother was saying this. During the time of the funeral, and my mom was squeezing the milk out, you know, and so I was being left alone in the crib. So whoever saw me and whoever saw the milk will pick me up and fed me a little bit and then put me down. And another person will pick me up and then, you know, fed me. So maybe that's why I survived. <laughs> Any more questions for the elders? What's that to do? Yeah, sure. uh, I would like to say a few words since I'm the oldest of uh, the next generation and, and on and on. Okay, I just felt that you know, as, as I age and I probably have seen and, and experienced, have contacted or, or have known uh, families and how the families, how they get together, how their relationships are. I, I just, every day I just, I'm very thankful. Okay, I, I look at the siblings, including what they explain about mm, Popo, you know, my grandma, their mom. And I, I saw them, how harmonious their relationships, how giving they are so unselfishly, especially in a time of difficulties, uh, they, they, they go out of their way to help their relatives, okay? They don't think about, well, geez, I want to keep that for myself. And their relationships are just so harmonious. And I'm just so thankful that, that I have this kind of relatives, okay? This kind of legacies, as examples passing on to us and passing on to you guys, because I'm sure some of you who are in their 50s or 40s, you probably have known some friends or, or, or you know colleagues or whatever that their families are fighting all the time or don't even speak to each other, okay? And how lucky we are that we have this kind of temperament, this, this kind of values, that pass on from them to us. And they're just the prime example. Okay, who well, share with us some of it, I, I know, some of it I did not know. But then, you know, for six siblings to be together, and I never see them 
argue with each other or, or whatever. I mean, itself is, is a miracle, okay? You talk about six, okay? So I, I just hope that we're just really honored and fortunate to be part of the Yang's family, even though your last name may not be Yang, like me, my last name is not Yang. But, you know, part of this came from that, that family tree, and I feel really proud to inherit some of the goodness from that family. And I just hope that having them as our examples, I hope that each one of you, as you grow up or age, depending on how old you are, really keep what you have seen, what you have heard today in, in your hearts. Because that is a prime example that you pass on to your kids, your grandkids. You know, of course, we make mistakes, but we have good examples that we, if we have the heart and, and the goal of wanting to be good, and these are examples, okay? You don't, you don't see this kind of families very often, okay? When it's good times, it's very easy. You know, people get together, they eat, they hug, they, 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 they drink, whatever. They, they don't drink, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but in hard times, that's when it shows. You're talking about hard times when lives are in, at risk. Their own lives are at risk. Even with that, they say, you know what? I have my loved ones. I need to help them, okay? So these are the kind of virtues that I hope each one of us will keep all of it or part of it, okay? Because what they have shown demonstrated and demonstrated are just the selfishness of their behaviors all through the years. And selfishness, they have demonstrated all through the years, okay? I mean, itself is, we should say, I'm proud to be part of the Yang's family. I came from there, okay? So that's my, my thinking. <laughs> okay, there are two points I want to, to get across. One is to be thankful and grateful. We, we said a few times, their mom, Da uh, Jie, and uh, the youngest brother, and his wife, Judy, and of course, no, the mama, yeah. The second point is really uh, be content with what you have, okay? I would like to summarize, even though they did not say anything, I would like to say something about these two systems. In what I'd like to share with you is the hard times they have gone through. This is not something you guys have even remotely can even dream that how what kind of hardship they have gone through. They have gone through the Japanese war and they have gone through the internal war between the Nationalist Party and the Communist Party. And during the hard times when they're in China, they, they went through famine, severe famine. They truly did not have anything to eat. They eat the skin of the trees and the, and the, roots. And the roots. That's what they ate to survive, to eat, to survive. You cannot even comprehend the hardship they have gone through. And, and during that time, because of the, the malnutrition situation they were in, and their faces are just swollen. And even those people who have 
uh, being fortunate enough to be in schools, they were forced to go to the countryside to work hard labor. Hard labor. This is a lot, I won't get into too much of the detail because of the time. The my point is, all of you sitting here, one thing I would like to really suggest to you is really to be content with what you have. And be content and be joyful always and always be grateful. And because of that, if you if you have that kind of uh, thinking, uh, then the mindset, then you'll be happy, you'll be healthy. Okay, Steve would like to say something. Um, I'd like to say something about Ma, uh, or Hua, or however you relate. Your mom. <laughs> In honor of her. Uh, many of you never got to know her because you came later on. I got to know her, but not as a Yang because I married a Yang. <laughs> uh, there's one thing in the translation you did not do correctly. <laughs> you described Ma as being a, uh, as being a lady, and then you said no, she's a woman. I must correct you. She was a lady. Thank you. And in English, a lady is very cultured, very proper, very honorable, uh, very respected, uh, very loving. And uh, I found that very true of her. Um, at the time when Xiao Yi and I were married, it was. Uh, very unusual to have a uh, Chinese marry uh, an American born Chinese. Very uncertain, yeah, it was brand new. <laughs> but she welcomed me, uh, Shane and Judy welcomed me, uh, and so I experienced immediately the hospitality of the name. Uh, she took me in as her son. She always uh, cooked the very best for me, so I had the opportunity to uh, taste her best cooking, uh -huh. and so I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, Ma was a very uh, great lady. Can I add something more? That was something that Da Zhu shared with me, I remember. Because can you imagine uh, everyone sitting here who has kids? Okay, uh, you have two or one, you have or even more, three, probably the three is the most, okay. Can you imagine going through turbulent times when your kids, you don't even know where they are or they're separate at different places, okay? For so many years, it seems like there was no hope that they would ever be gathered together. You know, just imagine the determination that she had when she had the opportunity. One opportunity is to become an American citizen to get the rest of the three of her kids to be moved and immigrated to, to uh, the States. When you're in your 60s, not knowing the language, that determination, that, that perseveres, that, that it, I just cannot even comprehend. Okay? And I remember Dajie was telling me that after uh, the three families all immigrated to uh, the States, and they're all, you guys are all in the Bay Area. And Dajie shared with me that the time when she chat with uh, their mom, that was her happiest time. Because just by what we heard, she went through so much. It's so much that we could not even comprehend a person who could survive and still sing, okay, uh, going through so much. But her later years, that in her life was her happiest. I really remember that because Popo, you know, our Popo, their mom was in the Bay Area. So of course, then we went to the Bay Area, you know, often enough, okay, because Popo was there, okay. So, and we're just so glad that, 
that the last few years of her life, when all of you who came from China and, and you know, uh, established here and, and really had a, a decent family life, like Daju described, okay, she was just overjoyed. My grandmother, from my recollection, she was very a quiet, a private kind of person. She doesn't even talk too much. She doesn't chat. Like, okay, I'll chat with you, how you're doing. She was never that type. But you could tell her love, which is non-verbal, but her expression, her, her, her action, that has demonstrated her love. The, 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 the depth of her love, which is non-describable. Okay. So I'm really, really fortunate to have this lady that we call, we have the honor to call my grandma as our grandma. Okay, so I want to add one well, more how she studied English. This is what she did. She had a tape recorder. She translated English into Chinese sound characters. <laughs> <laughs> Give you an example. Eggs, right? You talk E G G S, eggs. She would say, I can see. I can see. <laughs> okay. So, with all these questions in English, she translated that, wrote in Chinese, and memorized them every day, many hours a day. So, when she went to the consulate, She'll guess, oh, that sounds like my Chinese da 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 da. <laughs> so she'll answer. <laughs> the reason is because my brother applied for the rest of the planet, but it take five years. My mom said, I can't wait for five years. If I reply, if I apply, then they can come maybe a, a year. So that's her determination. Another one I want to add is my, my mother is this. You see, joy, happiness doesn't depend on material things. My mom had very little, but she's the most generous. Whenever we, we visit her in the Bay Area, she would take us to the most expensive restaurant. And she is the happiest, most content. So guess what? Happiness does not depend on how much accumulate. It's dependent upon your own heart attitude. And she said, for this life, I have all my children, my grandchildren. I am satisfied. I am happy. I am content. So my mom, hard life, struggles, sacrifice, you see, she gave, she gave. I still remember one thing she's always tell all of us, we remember, right? My mom would say, 大人要忠厚,宁愿自己学会. That means you're always good to others. you rather for you to lose and other win. 要忠厚 means you have to be faithful and loyal. Okay, that's one thing. Guess what? We have a Chinese proverb saying that you reap what you sow. So she gave, she gave, she gave. Toward at the end of her life, she's the most joyful, content person. And she died, not, not suffering, okay, not die of long period of time of sickness. And she just had a stroke, and there she went. So I want to say this about my mom, too. And probably... Uh, Many of you or all of you already know, uh, this year, for whatever reason, we chose to have a reunion. And this year is a 100-year birthday okay, of, of their mom. So it's a special year. Okay, If she were alive, she would be 100 years old. And July, she, July the 17th. July 17th was her birthday. Okay, And she will be so thrilled to see all of you sitting here young or a little bit old, <laughs> and she'll be so happy to see each one of you, okay, so. You will forgot one thing, she put zero one and zero S. <laughs> zero S? That's the zero number for our mark. Oh, okay. Zero, <laughs> zero huh? Zero. I'm not sure when she's zero. <laughs> I think that's the beginning. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
就在跟前的，太幸福。So for those of you who have your mothers、uh, still alive, um, you're really fortunate. 我记得我,我工作在大连的时候，想我妈妈的时候，我就到海边去钓鱼，朝着美国的方向流着泪喊妈。And I remember when I was、uh, still in China and working in Dalian, and、uh, many times I、uh, I went to、um, I went fishing, and facing the ocean, I'll be crying out to my mom on the side of the ocean,、um, the Pacific Ocean, I think, Pacific Ocean, and and, and cry at the same time, calling out my mom's name. Can we have a round of applause for the the? So, do you have any more questions? I I remember、uh, you know, we have our、um, family gatherings for birthdays and such.
they continue to call their mom, Nai Nai, until their father passed away. Then they start to call their mom, Mom, and not Nai Nai. Okay, Eva has a question. Your father died. Your father died. Okay. okay, he passed away of illness at the age of 36, really young. 1945. 1945. Yeah. Any more questions? I saw another hand. I have a comment. This is kind of a few things past, but um, it's, for as long as I can remember, and then our uh, Wonjoko would visit us, she always had these beautiful Chinese artifacts. I remember this gigantic jade sword. I remember all these things that she called hua. Basically, hua. Chinese graffiti. But they were probably worth a lot of money. And um, she toted these things around with her all over the place because her heart was always to get our family reunited for our you send me. That you know, and all their children back to the United States. And so she collected these beautiful art pieces because she was trying to sell them so that she could raise funds for the rest of the time. I mean, I was like five years old and I recall seeing these beautiful things. So it's always been a whole post radar for the whole family to be together. She never, it was just like her lifelong mission or her quest. Steve has uh, something I forgot is what Joanne was saying. Uh, in 1982, uh, Shirley and I uh, went to China to do some missions work. But uh, uh, Ma, I remember the evening, the things she sold, she bought the tickets for Danka and Dasao to come. Wow. And I remember she put it on the she gave it to me my, my hand, tucked it away, and uh, even then she was um, making waiting for the family to come. So uh, she was very purposed. Yeah. You know, uh, she didn't give up, and she uh, provided for the family to come. So it was amazing. Yeah. 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 他以前曾经有一个朋友是一个南方人不是西安不是不是就是一起做生意的那时候有一次他家里他们说锅盖都揭不开意思就是没有钱买买粮去他自己的话连房租也收不出去一切都是几年的房租我在那儿住几年就
take a bus to Chinatown, buy the stuff, because every time she's the one provide everything for the people to come to sing opera, the weekly opera, that Chinese her. opera, Chinese opera, that's her. She always giving, always giving, giving money, giving food, giving her, her, her effort, giving her strength. I mean, she will sacrifice just every year, every, every week, not every year, every week she will do that. And so her friends, when she's gone, they come back and remember her. I remember uh, when um, when you guys were all uh, living in the um, Bay Area, and uh, their mom at that time she was in her 70s, okay, was was aging, and even doing laundry, she had to carry her laundry all the way from the sixth floor to the first floor to do laundry. So one time, uh, Da Jiu uh, suggests to uh, their mom about actually moving to either Xiao Jiu's house or to their house to live with them. And she turned down. She said, you know, you guys will, you, you have your lives and, and you can continue with your lives. I, you know, I will stay by myself. Even though she was really at the age where she needed help. But she did not want to bother anybody. Any more questions? Comments? I think we got two more minutes to talk. <laughs> because we're at 12.30, walk to the beach, right? Well, another thing questions? about my mom is <laughs> perseverance. Perseverance. <laughs> Determination, perseverance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. See, if you yourself have those kind of uh, uh, characters, you should be very proud of that, and you know where you got that from, right? <laughs> I have blue jeans. Blue jeans? Yeah, I don't know what to say that. Blue jeans. Blue jeans. Blue jeans. Blue jeans. And so now we formally pass the baton from our generation to your generation and generations. Make sure to carry, to carry that baton and pass on that. Carry that faithfully as you run your life journey on this earth. And then pass the baton to your offspring. <laughs> Really, this reunion was just all planned and handled 
and organize and whatever to the greatest detail by not their generation, probably not even some of our generation, because I'm the oldest one of our generation. I'm looking at the youngest one. <laughs> so I cannot say not being handled by our generation because I definitely did not do anything. Okay. It's starting by this youngest one in the in this generation and along this one, along with the next generation after you guys. So round of applause for you guys. Okay, everyone will get a copy of this. Uh, 
但是很难得。希望今后未来还能有这次机会，反正是不能说是多一次少一次吧。嗯，希望就是说能够尽量的多几次，这就是我们大家的希望。Well, this is spontaneous. Um, I'm feeling very much loved. Um. Just because I'm surrounded by my family, even though some seem like strangers, yet there's definitely a closeness and a bond that we all have together because we're related.、Um, I feel that everyone is having a wonderful time being reacquainted and becoming newly acquainted with、um, other people that we don't know. And I hope that this happens very often, at least every other year. And that's it. Who else wants to be on the panel? Um, today, so many people. Hundreds of people here. I want to talk about two points. First, we need to thank God. This is very important. These people are here because of Dad and Linda. 一九四八年从大陆飞到台湾，决定了我们今天这么多人不同的命运。第二个人是郑清和瑞仪。郑清一九六零年一个人坐船到美国，头一个杨家岭第一个来的，和瑞仪在这块土地上奋斗。第三个就是妈妈，为了我们。在大陆那三家人早点移民过来，早一点啊，读英文，六十几岁去学英文，考取功名以后，给我们来信，心中一块石头落了地。这个我们要大家要想着，永远纪念他们，怀念他们，感恩。第二点就是要知足，我们这些人正在在。这个全世界来说，没有十全十美的地方。这个是一个比较自由的国家，比较公平，也不是绝对啊。我们这一代人在大陆是多灾多难，日本人轰炸，国民党、共产党，中国人打中国人，共产党来了更坏，更。哇！我们都饿得吃树叶子，念过书的人送到农村去喂猪喂鸡，就这样的。这个日子，他们很多人想象不到我们的亲身经历，所以这是两个制度，两个不同的国家，生活是完全不一样。啊，好了，就讲这两点。啊，最后我要感谢下一。鲁安啊，这些年轻人啊，真能干嘞，做的多好啊，在那区啊，也有顾客，做的多好，安排的多好，啊，这个宿舍的安排，感谢他们。Hello， Hi。Wow。Two more people. Okay, everybody. Okay. So, in about fifteen minutes, we're gonna get together into photos. But before that, we have a quick game for you guys for some. Okay. Interesting.